Yeah, thanks everybody. Obviously great to see all you faces, friendly faces again, um, ahead of uh, an exciting season, season for LAFC. Um, we'll be here to answer any questions. I think, um, you know, we've been at work tirelessly um, to make the moves that we feel like we need to, to make in order to maintain our competitiveness in this league. It's not an easy task given the way our league is constructed and, and what have you. But as we have shown in the past, we um, have been able to, and I'm confident we will continue to be able to make some of these decisions, some of them hard ones, uh, in order to make sure that we put a team out there that is representative of what we stand for at LAFC and one that our fans and our city uh, will continue to be proud of. I would assume you, it's fair to say you probably feel like you have a lot of work to do. Has this window been, or this offseason been slower to develop than, than other teams? So by this time, normally you have a lot of stuff done. Yeah, no, absolutely true. I think it is what is true, and I think um, the fact that we went more than a month later this year than we did last year uh, makes it difficult. I think our off-season work was concentrated into a much shorter period than we are used to. It's, it's interesting because while I would say relative to previous years in terms of the group we had together, it's there is still, I would say, work to be done. I think the heavy lifting has been done. I just think the announcements are to come. That we are um, a bit behind relative to where we are, and I think part of that was, again, going so far into the, into the final. And then I think the other part of it is when you have to make moves of departures before to create the space to bring people in, a lot of that work had to be done, and when you're doing it, you know, in mid-December, right before Christmas, it does delay things a little bit. But having said that, um, I think we have a core here that we're really excited about. And we have some additions that we will be in position to announce very shortly to give our excellent staff uh, the players that we know um, will result in a competitive group. I see that the Denis is on this roster, Kellen and Vela are not. Is mm -hmm. Um, I think there's finality in some of them. Um, I, don't, I think they're all set. Uh, I'll take them all separately if that's okay. Uh, Denis is here. He unfortunately um, got sick before planning to come to come back, which we understood and and obviously um, granted him time to be well enough before flying. But Denis is coming back as I think we expected all along, unless we had um, a, a transfer that has not materialized. And so... Denis is motivated and excited to come back and help us win more trophies. The other two you mentioned were our free agents. I think, as you have seen over the last two years, our league is not designed to do what we've done these last two years. And then again now, um, we don't take years off at LAFC. We go for it every single year. And I think a result of that is now the tough work that, that we've had to do. And I think ironically, despite saying we're not, we still have some signings to do. This has been not even close, but by far the busiest offseason I have ever had, including our scouts and everybody. Um, it has been absolutely nonstop, and I think that work is paying off. And I think what, what's difficult, I think, from the outside is, you, is, is uh, people on the outside can't see what's around the corner. I can, <clears throat> our staff can, and I, and I know we're, we're really excited about, about this season. There's going to be change. Um, like last year, we are in a very um, disadvantaged position when it comes to negotiating with free agents because the last two years, the value of our players has risen because of their success here. Um, as we have success, things, I'm not going to get into rules and things, but managing a salary cap gets incredibly tight. So you combine the value of those players going up, you combine our money shrinking, in effect, and it makes it really difficult for us to, to compete for, for free agents. We're always successful at attracting the free agents. What's difficult is keeping them because they get really significant offers from teams that have more flexibility in what they can offer. Carlos and, and, and Kellen are both in that, in that position, and I would say, I could say that Kellen is not coming back. I don't know exactly where, where he will land, and obviously we wish him well. I've been in touch with Kellen and thanked him for his 
time here, these two years were very successful that we had with him as a big part of what of what we achieved at LAFC. Carlos, we remain in open conversation. I am hopeful we'll be able to find something. I think it's going to come down to us putting our best foot forward. And unfortunately, with all the comings and goings that we have not, we frustratingly have not had that clarity to date, but we are in ongoing conversation with him, his representatives. Um, we will put our best foot forward in the hopes of Carlos uh, coming back to LAFC. And ultimately that's going to be, you know, a conversation in the next couple of days and, and week in the hopes uh, that that happens. If, if it does not, obviously that would be unfortunate for us. Um, but I hope there's more to the Carlos Vela story here at LAFC. Since 2023, which actually uh, you guys didn't get to the uh, uh, goal commitment, right, to, to be the champion. Yeah, I'm glad you raised that. I'm going to take the opportunity to address last year because I haven't had the chance to after the final or the day of the final. Um, it is true we didn't achieve our ultimate objective. Absolutely. Are we disappointed about that? For sure. I do believe that we can be disappointed that we did not win the Champions League like we wanted. We did not win MLS Cup like we wanted. But I think it would be we would be remiss to then categorize the year as a disappointment. I think if you look back, you can look at it that way, and certainly people are free to. What I have to do is look at it from a bird's eye view and say, like, what is the trajectory of this club? Because things can happen in a game. And, and what I will say that I think, I don't know that has been recognized, but I certainly recognize is you can look at it that way or you can say we did things that no team has ever done before. And I think when you look at any other MLS team that has gone far in Champions League, and look, I credit Seattle, they won it, but it absolutely destroyed their league form. They didn't make the playoffs, and that was a really good team and a team that we were looking up to at the time because they had won Champions League. If you think back to what our players had to go through last year and to just make it back to the final, I think another way of looking at it by repeating as Western Conference champions is that there's a lot to be proud of and Many teams would deem that as a, as a success. And I do also think that making the final and saying that it is overall a disappointment, frankly, is disrespectful to all the teams that didn't even make it to the final. So um, I'm glad you opened the door for me to, uh, to address that. Looking ahead, I tell you what I'm really excited about is I think I'm not excited that we're not in Champions League. That's for sure. That is an ambition of this club. That's something that we strive to achieve every single year. I think, though, we... Like we've done every year, we look at the, the footprint of our calendar and we say, what type of team do we need to compete? And in 2022, we felt, look, this team really needed some veteran experience, guys that knew the league, and, and we got that, and it worked. We won the Supporters' Shield, we won MLS Cup. Last year, what we looked at is how, how can we build a team with the depth that can compete on all fronts? And look, did we win the trophy? Ultimate trophy that we wanted? No. But did we did we succeed in competing on all fronts? Yes. We were the last team standing in MLS in Champions League, and there was one team that beat us in, in MLS Cup. So that was last year. So what I would say is I'm not excited we're not in Champions League, but looking at the footprint of the calendar, I think it will enable us to play a more normal rhythm of games week to week. I don't think we have a mid midweek game until mid-May and I think that's just a very different strategy required for this year than there was last year. I think you will soon see we're going to be adding some very exciting talent. I think we will add some experience but we feel like the players we have particularly the new ones that we brought on last year um, will take a big step forward. I'm talking about Tillman, I'm talking about uh, Bogush, I'm talking about Aaron Long, I'm talking about Sergi Palencia, I'm talking about Kike Oliveira. And I think also when you think about Eric Duenas and Nathan Ordaz, we're expecting a big step up. And we have said to our supporters from the beginning that our academy graduates are going to be a big part of what we do at the first team level. So we've been very careful to not block any paths for the players like Eric and Nathan that we think will take a step forward. And we also are soon to announce some really exciting young talent that we think will take this, this group forward. I think we still have that building out to do, but if you look at a team, if we were playing tomorrow on the 11 that would step on that field, it's a really good group. I just think now we need to round that out and we'll bring, we will only bring players in that add to the quality we have, which is not easy because of the quality of players we already have. But we have some options that will soon be finalized and announced that we're really excited about.
You got it. Is it, is it too late? I mean, you're already in the camp. We've mm -hmm. been here, what, a week, 10 days, something like that? The Less. aren't here yet. Mm -hmm. um, is, is, it, is, is it too close to the start of the season for them to be effective and to be here right at the start? Or are you thinking more about these guys will be... No, I think... It, well, certainly it's more important. Not May. It's it's important that everybody's firing first game of the season, and I think we used preseason to prepare for that. I do think some players needed a break. I think uh, there are certain players that we we played a year long season. We had more games than anybody has ever had, and I think the mental and physical toll demanded that some players needed a longer break. So we were flexible with certain players to allow them um, that adequate rest, and but not that we're not that we're doing so to compromise where we think our team will be uh, in February. So the players that we have coming back, they know our system. I do think for players to single out one like Kike Oliveira, it is important that he comes back. He's been training with uh, Uruguay at the pre-Olympics all off season. He is coming back. But for a player like Denis, who's been here now for a year and a half, who needed a little bit of a break, he wants to be here. He couldn't. But um, Hugo Lloris is also finalizing everything. Um, his matters in, in the U.K. and will be here this weekend. And I think this – and we, we also, mind you, other teams have been in camp for longer than us because of the mandated six weeks break. We have started later, so they're only missing a few days. Uh, they're interdependent, so both. Um, in terms of what I think of them as players, it is not a judgment or uh, anything negative. I think what we, what we always do with all of our players is we say, okay, this is where things stand. This is what is best for you as a player. This is what makes sense for us. Um, so it's interdependent. And, 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 and in both those cases with Stipe and Mario, Stipe is an incredibly talented player, and I think he showed that. I think there's a player that's ahead of him in his best position that plays every minute of every game and is arguably the best player in the league. So for us, when, in that case, we had to sit back and say, okay, what's best for Stipe? What's best for LAFC? And we thought that this opportunity at Valladolid that I believe just got announced, hope I'm not jumping the gun, um, is, is an opportunity for him to get playing time in a good league and show well because Denny is here. And, and we didn't necessarily see that, that situation changing for Stipe in the short term. What that means long term, we will see. We've had players go on loan and come back, and the loan experience has really helped, helped them develop. But I think Stipe, at this stage in his career, really needs to be playing. And, and Valladolid is a phenomenal option for him to get those, those minutes that, that he needs, whether that ends up being to the benefit of LAFC long term or, or a move, time will tell. Mario was similar in that we brought Mario in with, with a certain – uh, plan in mind and then as things developed Carlos then started playing as that in in his pitch so it was a similar thing playing time etc Mario got a really good opportunity um, at, at Gijon and then on the flip side where I say it's in, in interdependent is those moves create the space to then allow us to improve the team in other ways Yeah. Did, how did he take to that decision, and, and why was that important to him? Yeah, no, it was. Uh, it was a. I, I was disappointed to see whatever came out publicly because I feel like we have been, we have shown throughout our history to be of like absolutely respectful and appreciative and supportive of our players joining their national teams. Case in point, there was no FIFA window, no obligation at all to release Kike, and we said it's fine, go and train with him. We know of his importance and what have you. We actually did offer a compromise that allowed him to be a part of the tor tournament that they, they actually said no to. And I don't want to get into all, all the details, but the main reason is, A, our players do need a break. Kiki had been going for a year straight, and we thought we should try to find the right balance, which we definitely tried to do and address with them privately, not publicly. Um, so that was one. And then the other thing is, I think, for a player like Kike who comes in mid-season with the number of games we had, it's really hard for him to really integrate so much of the work that you see on a game day is prepared on the training pitch. And preseason is the unique opportunity where you get hours on the training pitch for him to adapt and really understand our system. I think Kike will prove to be a phenomenal addition given his skill set and what he brings to our group. 
I think if you look at him last year, he did so on an individual basis. But if you add his tactical IQ and understanding of our system, I think that is why for us it was important to bring him back after he had adequate rest. How, how did he react to that? Um, Kike wants to play. He wants to please everybody. He wants to please his club. He wants to please the Federation. So we do not put the player in any sort of um, uncomfortable situation between the two groups, and we dealt with everything. Um, so I know if Kike would have gone and played there, he'd have given his all. And I know that when Kike comes back, he'll also give his all. Yeah, one more for me, if I could. Uh, Lorenzo De La Valle, what are you expecting from him now joining LAFC? Obviously, you know, with, with Giorgio, it seems like sort of a natural fit, a mentorship there. Yeah. Uh, is he a good guy that can get regular minutes, do you think? Yeah, so Lorenzo it, it did not – obviously, we had, a lot, we had a lot going on. But signing Lorenzo was an incredible coup for LAFC, too, at the time. He'd come off – Arguably the best defender in the U19 Euros for Italy. They had a very successful tournament, and he, he individually as well. So the ability to, to get that done was something that we always saw this as a possibility, and, and we had high hopes for him. We didn't sign Lorenzo to be an LAFC 2 player. How quickly he adapted was always an unknown, but he showed right away he has the quality to step up into our first team. So as soon as we saw that last year, this was the plan to bring him up into – the first team and now he's a part of our core of four center backs along with Murray Aaron uh, I also want to take the opportunity to talk about Eddie Segura who's now coming back from an injury but looks fantastic Eddie will be like a new signing for us and and those those of us myself included and many of you who have followed the club I mean what a professional what a guy and what a player that we have to welcome back and he's been looking very sharp in training and has worked so hard over these years and maybe aside from Eddie and his family there will be nobody more excited to see Eddie back on that field than myself and our staff. Sean, just going back to those three that he mentioned going back to Europe, um, you know the, the scouting department started in South America, you added that European element and now three of those first four coming from Europe are, are pretty quickly going back. Mm -hmm. Is there something that you learned uh, with your European scouting department in that area? Um, yeah, I think that's more coincidental rather than generalizing a geography of where where people came from and we also sent fall on loan we also sent brian rodriguez on loan um, we also initially sent diego on alone so it's something that the conversation comes up and you have to take your roster and your squad and say what is best for these individual players and how will it help us improve um in other areas i mean i think if you look at our team it's really hard to break into especially if you look ahead at this year we're having one game a week and there's not the ability to rotate or need to rotate quite as much. You look at those guys that are in that periphery that maybe could compete for minutes, and they all played last year, but we thought for them and for us it made more sense to explore those options. But it had nothing to do with whether they're European or South American or Asian or African. Um, and we just felt that those were the right moves for those players. And in two of the cases in particular, but in all of them, I think the – the greater probability of receiving minutes. It's always what's important to a player. And if we can't guarantee them that, we always are open with them and their representatives to look at options that make sense for both parties. And then I noticed uh, David Ochoa on the trial list list. I'm curious, knowing that LAFC is always focused on the player as well as the, per as well as the person behind yep. the player. He's had you know, disciplinary issues at past clubs, mm -hmm. showing up to training late, things like that. What have you seen from him here and why do you see him as a, as a good piece? Uh, yeah, I mean, Dave, David, we, we welcome the opportunity to, to take a look at him. He hasn't come late for any training thus far. Um, we, all, we, you know, look, I think uh, having been a player, having been a young player, um, I, don't, I don't think any, myself, Steve, our staff, there's anything that we haven't seen before. <clears throat> you are absolutely right that we prioritize the person and the character, and we won't sign anybody that doesn't meet our standards. The other thing I will tell you that is – a strength of LAFC now that we probably couldn't take, and I don't want to say we take risks, but we have such a strong culture that if a player steps out of line, Steve doesn't even need to say a word. That we have guys here um, that, that really uphold the standards and ensure that the expectations of what it means to be an LAFC player and staff member, et cetera, those are firmly set, um, and, and anything less than that is not tolerated. I think we can add a piece in midfield. I think we're, we, we feel very good about the group we have. We have Elie returning. We have uh, Timmy, who 
you know, is coming off a very strong camp with the national team uh, and a performance. So he's he's ready to go. He's probably ahead of the others in terms of their their readiness to play. But um, excited to see what what he'll do this year. I think Timmy's <clears throat> Timmy's season last year started off so incredibly well, and I think he was beset by injury. He never quite captured that rhythm again, except in uh, in certain flashes. But certainly is a top midfielder in our league. Uh, and then add to Timmy, you add Bogush, who I think is really going to take a step forward. Um, he's, he's a player that gets a lot of attention already. And what you see with him in the training ground and his ability, I think, to have a set position moving forward uh, in our group. I know our staff is very excited of, of what's to come from him. And then I also add Eric Duenas into that. Eric, more than anybody, is an LAFC system player. He knows this system from when he was 12 years old, and it shows. And... I'm really excited for Eric to take uh, another step forward. But having said that, we, we do need an extra piece, maybe two there. Um, have some very exciting possibilities there. Um, and then also, we will have uh, an, an announcement very soon about some young attackers that we have coming up front. And we're looking at options um, and having some advanced discussions with some experienced players uh, in the attack as well. All right, we'll, go. we'll take a couple questions on Zoom. Uh, John Arnold, go ahead, John. Yeah, there's a lot there, um, and I don't know if it's philosophical, but I'll give you my, my, my take on it. I don't think it's too much of a change. I feel like for us to succeed, and, and, I, and I, I'm very uh, grateful to the, to the phenomenal work of our scouts down in, down in South America. Now we're expanding around, around the world. It's, it's a really interesting question um, or challenge in that we, because of our finances, have to be there before the bigger clubs and now I say maybe what is a change is I do think that clubs now are more global in their in their scouting you're seeing more players go from South America to the Premier League now uh, uh, things like that where maybe we could have got that player first but if we are in the conversation when England and Europe is already there it's too late so your point about going and watching them at a big tournament and uncovering some gem those days are long gone but the challenge is the same in the sense that we need to be there before them with less resources than them. So it is a challenge, but I think that's why I take great pride in the phenomenal work of our group. Started in Uruguay and now has expanded into Argentina, Paraguay, Colombia, Ecuador. Um, what am I missing? Colombia, Ecuador. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that northern part of South America. So we, um, it, it is a challenge, but it's something that I still think, and, and hopefully if conversations continue we'll have announcements on that end as to the next wave of talent we see coming from south america all right we got time for two more we'll go uh, andy dioso go ahead andy thanks hey john uh you talked about eddie a little bit i'm gonna ask you about him what is that return to play look like from talking to him a little bit around the stadium throughout the time he's recovering just seeing how he's going what does that look like uh, realistically for him getting back on the field and just the importance of keeping georgia around i'm not sure if you Hmm. Yeah, I'll take the Eddie one first. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we need to be realistic, to use the, the word you, uh, you used. I think we need to be realistic. We're very excited that Eddie is back and in training, and I think it's going to be – he has been out for a long time. That's not lost on us. I do think that the work he has done is really going to benefit him. He's stronger than before his injury, um, and all of the work he was, he was able to put in – um, Eddie's quality, he won't lose. He's a phenomenal passer, his, his competitiveness, all of that. And of what we've seen physically, he has at least recovered, if not improved, from pre-injury. But, you know, now that he is in the stimulus of the game, the day-to-day -day training environment, I think we need to be cautious, but we're optimistic that with Eddie and the work he's put in with our medical staff, 
um, that he will be in line to compete for minutes uh, once we get going. Uh, your second question about Giorgio. Look, I don't think I need to explain what, what an asset Giorgio is to any club. And we were, we were um, once it was clear to us that Giorgio did, was, was finished after, uh, after the final, um, you know, we started talking to him about what, what, what he wants to do next. And, and we'd always talked about Giorgio's post-playing career even when we signed him from Juventus. And, and, and so giving him opportunities to grow while also being a huge asset to us. So, you know, if, I'm, if once I hear that this miracle possibility of us getting Hugo Lloris is on the table and I can call Giorgio and, be, and say, like, look, this is what my sense is, give me the real scoop on him, uh, is great. And then that's one thing. So he's been, been involved in our scouting, getting his eye, particularly on the defenders that we're, we're looking at. And then also just his presence in the building now with some of our younger players and the senior players. He still is able to give us that, that valuable leadership, maybe not in the locker room, but his presence here is still strongly felt within the group. Probably the last question. Uh, Charlie, Charlie Bum, go ahead, Charlie. Hey, John, more, more about the, uh, the goalkeeper signing. What led you, or how did that come together? And what led you to, to, to make that move? Can you give a little insight into the, the, the TikTok on that? Yeah, sure. So our plan and intention going into the offseason was to keep Max. Um, Max was a phenomenal person, player, and above all, regardless of the fact that he's now not here, what I was so grateful for, for Max's sake, is that he recovered the way he did, and he finished so strong. Um, I would have felt terrible had Max not had that opportunity to show that he is back to full strength um, prior to the end of his contract, etc. So we did enter those conversations with Max. As I referenced what, you know, at, the, at the outset, it does become difficult for us in terms of what we can do with our salary cap, etc., it quickly became apparent that it was going to be a challenge for us to keep Max, and and we understand that Max earns the right, you know, as a free agent to go, um, to have that agency to go to go where he chooses. I do know that it's unfortunate because I do think Max wanted to stay, and we certainly wanted to keep him. However, um, we had a really constructive, understanding conversation when when it came time to the decision, and. Um, at that point, then we had to focus on, on other options. The opportunity for Loris had come up months prior, um, but that was not in our plans. But then when it quick, then when we had this big hole to fill um, at the goalkeeper position, I then you know reached back out to see what was possible. I spoke to Hugo, met with his family, really got an understanding of what he's looking for in this next step of his career. Tottenham were fantastic throughout. They let us go and watch him train, meet with the goalkeeper coach, see exactly where he's at physically, mentally, everything. Um, and then we were able to secure that signing, which is a huge coup for us. Um, a player of that experience, quality human being, excellent goalkeeper. We are, we're certainly really excited to welcome him and, and his family in, in the coming days. I had the the, the, the opportunity to go to London for his farewell match. And it's similar to Giorgio, and obviously it's not lost on us that, you know, Giorgio is leaving and now we have another person with similar experience, similar success coming into the club because we've seen that, that value. But similar to Giorgio, the level of praise that people went out of their way to talk, to tell me about Hugo it was at a Giorgio level. Um, and so we're really excited to see what that will add to our group. I can assure you that everything that is reported is absolutely accurate. <laughs> Always. Yeah, look, when I, when I tell you, um, I sort of, like, there's nobody, nobody other than me would love to have the full roster right now. It has literally been the busiest offseason. What I will tell them is we are, uh, dis I, I understand, again, what I said earlier, like not knowing what's coming around the corner. 
What I will say is I would like to think we have a track record at this club of understanding what it takes to win here and in Champions League and, and what have you. That is still the plan for this year. Uh, we are very excited about what is to come. I do, uh, I do understand their frustration. I share the frustration. I wish it was, it was done as well. Um, but as I said, there are reasons for it. It's not because we're not working. It's not because we don't want them now. Um, but I think uh, the, 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 the judgment should not come today. It should come you know, in, in fe at the end of February when you see the exciting team that they'll have on the field to cheer on against Seattle.